Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we'll be looking at a concrete shear wall design. So just a quick recap on our shear walls, right? We uh, typically design shear walls to resist lateral loading due to earthquake and wind. Um, they resist shear, and they also resist flexure and axial loads. And if possible, it's usually desirable to um, have the walls support gravity loads, uh, which just helps resist the overturning forces. And then we satisfy our uh, demand capacity uh, uh, limitations there from ACI for axial moment and shear. So we quick quick look at a, a diagram here of a shear wall, right? We have our in-plane shear forces, our in-plane moment, our axial force, and then also our self-weight of the wall, right? So that's what we're going to be looking at today for designing this shear wall. We also have out-of-plane shear and out-of-plane moment, but that will not be considered as part of our analysis for this calculation. So let's take a look at our problem statement, right? We're going to be using ACI 318.19. We have a 10 foot long wall. It is 12 feet tall. We have a dead load of 55 kips, a live load of 75 kips, a lateral earthquake shear load of 17 kips, and that's resolved at the bottom of the wall. And then a moment also resolved at the bottom of the wall of 204 kip feet. Uh, we have our uh, compressor strength of 4,000 PSI. Um, our rebar is 60,000 PSI yield strength. Our wall thickness is 8 inches. We have number 5s at 12 each way, centered on the wall, right? It's only 8 inches thick, so just one layer of reinforcement. Um, loading as shown, and we're going to be checking the wall to see if it's sufficient to resist the loading. And then also, we're going to size the foundation um, based on the minimum IBC bearing pressure allowables. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook, and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now, so we go ahead and click into our concrete design module, and we'll click into our standalone designs, and then we will click into shear wall design. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start uh, changing some of our options here. So we are going to check our foundation, right? I think in a previous video we did a shear wall without the foundation, so we'll go ahead and check the foundation this time. Go ahead and click sliding calculation, yes and also our overturning calculation. We'll check both of those. Uh, our loads, our lateral loads are due to seismic or wind. That has to do with our uh, lateral pressures. And we will include the top one foot of soil uh, in our lateral sliding calculation. So our footing dimensions, right, we don't know exactly what they're going to be, but we have a <coughs> 10 foot long wall. So we'll start with a uh, 14 foot long foundation. We can go and leave it at three feet wide and we'll see what we end up with here. Uh, we said our wall is going to be 10 feet. The wall height is 12 feet and the thickness is 8 inches. We have a single layer of number 5 bars for vertical reinforcement and a single layer of number 5 bars at 12 for uh, the horizontal reinforcement. We have our buckling length right, uh, of 1 and then our axial load ratio. This has to do with our uh, uh, sustained axial load against our factored axial load. Uh, you can read more about this in ACI, but the commentary permits a value of 0 0.6 to be used. So that is the default value. Uh, if you calculate something else, you can go ahead and use that uh, in your calculations. For the soil, we're going to increase this assuming a class 4. Uh, so this is going to be 2 and 2.67 KSF for our dead plus live and then our one third increase uh, for the, uh, the, the total for earthquake or wind. And I believe that is it for now. Let's go ahead and go over to our demands. We have a flexural demand of 204 kip feet. And we have an axial demand of 75 or excuse me, 55 dead, 75 live, and then a shear of 17. All right, we'll go back to our capacity side here to make sure we don't have any other values to enter. And I think we're good to go here. Uh, we could increase our lateral to 0 0.15. And I think that is good to go. And I believe actually this should be 0.25. Okay, so we've got all of our information entered. We can see that we're over with our bearing pressure of 1.8, but let's step through the calculations and then we can come back and adjust as needed. So we've got our demand side things, right? We've got our additional loading due to the wall, the weight, excuse me, the weight of the wall of 12 kips. So we've added that to our dead load. Then we've got our various load combinations for each of our uh, load cases, our flexural, axial, and shear. So it figures out what is the controlling combination for each item. And then we can go ahead and calculate our bearing pressure, right? So this is going to be the bearing pressure for just dead plus live. So we're just taking our total axial over our footing area. 
uh, gives us 3.6 KSF, right? That's what we're seeing here of about 1.8 DCR. Um, and then we can calculate our seismic or wind bearing pressure, right? Which is going to have an overturning effect. So we would calculate our eccentricity. Evaluate that against our current area, right? The L over 6. And that would give us a 4.39 KSF uh, uh, bearing pressure on the right edge. So let's go ahead and try to update our foundation to eliminate this bearing pressure issue, right? So the easiest thing is either to make the footing wider or longer. So we can go up to maybe four feet, right? So this is going to be a little bit bigger, maybe six feet will do it. Um, and so we maybe need a little bit more. So maybe we need to update the 15 feet here. Maybe a touch more will get us over. So there we go. Uh, so now we actually jumped into sliding resistance. So we solved our bearing pressure issue, right? I think around 14 feet or so, right? Um, so we went from bearing pressure as a controlling uh, issue. And then when we went to the six feet wide, we went to sliding resistance. So we could have just increased our soil maybe above the footing. So maybe we can go three feet of soil above, right? So we get some more resistance there. And we're at a 1.0 bearing pressure. So I think this is acceptable for right now. Um, and we can uh, uh, move on with the rest of the calculations. So for our sliding capacity, right, this is similar to our spread footing calculations, but we're basically evaluating the lateral earth pressures. We're looking at the frictional uh, resistance we have, adding those together, and then figuring out what our factor of safety against sliding is. Then we have our overturning capacity. Similar thing, where we are calculating the total overturning moment, our total resisting moment, and calculating a factor of safety against that. Uh, and then we get into our strength checks, right? So we do our reinforcement uh, checks. So we have our horizontal reinforcement check minimums, and then our vertical reinforcement check minimums. We pass both of those requirements. We get into our flexural capacity, right? Which is just sort of a standard, uh, you know, concrete beam section analysis. And then we can go into our moment capacity based on that section analysis, right? About a thousand kip feet, and our demand is much, much lower than that. Uh, we have an axial capacity, right? Which is going to be based on the stiffness and the buckling load. So we calculate that, and we get a uh, maximum axial compressive strength and our design axial compressive strength. Lastly, we check our shear capacity. Right, which has to do with our ratio, our height to width, uh, length ratio. And then we have our uh, in-plane strength shear calculation, some maximum values, and then our design in-plane shear strength. So that is a shear wall and foundation design in CalcBook. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you have questions or suggestions for other videos, please let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.